Canada was a trailblazer in many respects. Canada was the first country to say, we want to do our own thing. We don't want to be run by the United by Nations. And it's an extraordinary story. It started perhaps, the, 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 it started maybe a whole decade earlier. Independence was in 57. But in 1947, as you know, in many countries we have nationalist movements, and we had what we call the United Gold Coast Convention. All these lawyers and merchants and the influential people. And they came together and they decided that they were going to work so that Ghana would become an independent country, Ghana on his own. And they brought Kwame Nkrumah, who we all extension. He was in he was studying in England, in, in, in America, and they brought Kwame Nkrumah to Ghana, to the Gold Coast at the time. 1947, and they said to him, we want you to come and work as our secretary for the movement and, and to work hard so that we can gain independence. Kwame Krumah was really determined, and you, I tell you, it was six of them in that movement, and in, in a short time it became clear that, that there were differences. Some of them wanted independence slowly. Some of them felt that perhaps we needed to train Ghanaians a bit more, pass on some skills, take its time. Others like Kwame Kwame were like, no, 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 we want to be independent now, right now. And so you can imagine. And then Kwame Kwame went off. I, I, I'll finish the story in the article. I promise you. Five minutes only. The Kwame Kwame went off and formed a brand new political organization. He went away from the United Gold Coast Convention, which was the big organization that was fighting for Ghana. And he set up his own new organization with loads of young people. It's amazing what young people can do. Because Conor Kuma set up his party. It was called the Convention People's Party. That's the party. And you're not it, because I'm sure you've heard it, right? That's the party that, that, that brought Ghana independence. So, in 10 years, Carl Kuma was really busy going around, speaking to people, championing the cause of that. And he got arrested. In 1948, there were riots in Accra, in Ghana. They had no idea there were riots, you know, all over. And, and I don't know if you guys realize that that period was really the period of the Second World War had ended. And all these ex servicemen who had been fighting in Burma, who had been fighting for Britain, because when Britain was involved in the war, it had people from all its colonies fighting for it. So Ghanaian soldiers were fighting for Britain at the time. And at the end of the war, they all came back to the Gold Coast. And they had nothing to do. They were sitting around, they were very frustrated. And so they went on a demonstration. And they went and said to government, we need better conditions. We are fed up with so much. And some of them were killed. They, they were going off to the, to, the, to the castle, where the government, where the head of state, the British government lived in the castle. And they were heading there with placards, you know, and, and a massive demonstration. And then they got in soup. And, and, and maybe sometime we should go and see that. They got to what they call, you know, at, 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 at Sukhasa, before Sukhasa, Christian's War. They got to the police were there right there and said, no way, you guys are not coming in here. And there was a, a struggle and some people got killed. And the famous chap we called Sergeant Ajiti, he was one of the soldiers that had come from, 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 from the war. And so you can imagine, people started looting in a crowd where you had shops now. In those days, you know, England, the United Kingdom had all these big shops in a crowd and people went and looted and smashed the windows and it was crazy. And some people got arrested and Kwame Nkrumah got arrested and sent to prison. And, if, and believe it or not, the British were under so much pressure they said, well, let's have elections all the same. Let's pass power, power to the Ghanaians. And Kwame Nkrumah was in prison, but he still, his name was on the ballot. And he won, even in prison, he won his seat, the Member of Parliament. So in 1951, he was released from prison. And he had a new title. They called him the leader of government business. Because it took some time. Gradually, Kwame Nkrumah brought his team of Ghanaians, and they took over. From, from, from the British, they had elections in 54 again, the more and more Guineans, and that whole process of independence was underway. And in 1957, it was great, in 1957, the British decided, 
kind of enough of this. Ghana really wants its independence. We are out of here. And so Father Kuma gave his famous speech at the polo grounds in the crowd. Maybe sometime we should go there and see it. Very famous place in the crowd. And he gave his, his speech and said that it's time for us to be free and it's you should hear that speech all the time. Where he says, Ghana is free forever. And there were the crowd chanting and, and there were great films about that. And, and, and finally, Ghana was independent in 1957. And in, 19, and, he, and in 1960, it became a republic, which means no more. The British government left. The British government left all the British. Uh, uh, if you like, officials, whatever, they all went back home. And, and Ghanaians took over, you know, in, in every corner of government. And so by 1960, we had a solid, independent Ghanaian state. And every other country in Africa began to copy that. And so that's, in, in a nutshell, the story. Okay? And this is between 1957, really, and 57. By 1957, Ghana was recognized as an independent state. Are you with me? Yeah?